What's going on guys? Let's talk about the equipment that helped me produce a 150 mile an hour club head speed, 224 mile an hour ball speed. All right guys, first off, I wanna give a shout out to Callaway Golf for providing me with, in my opinion, one of the fastest heads that has ever been made. Uh, they got a great team of engineers working tireless hours, uh, finding the right combination of uh, COG and, and materials and heat treatments that allows us to maximize our ability to hit the ball the furthest and swing the club the fastest, okay? So here's the setup that I use to produce a 151 point something. Uh, the ball speed was 224.8, which is my personal PR in ball speed. Um, and it's a little bit different than what you guys can buy at home or are used to, okay? So first off, okay, when we talk about the length of the club, the golf club is maxing out the legal USGA length, okay? So we are maxed out at 48 inches. Now, keep in mind, this is something that I could actually go tee up and play with in a PJ Tour event. However, um, obviously guys elect to have anywhere from a 45 to 46 inch driver uh, because it makes it a lot easier to control uh, out during the round of a golf. And it does, they don't necessarily get paid on hitting it the furthest. However, I do. So we wanna make sure that we are maxing that, that length out as far as we can legally. Um, now, to start with the head, we are actually hitting, and I'm hitting the new version of the Callaway long drive head, which is the 2020 model of the Epic. Okay, so you could kinda see it has some uh, orange graphics on it. Um, this head is a five degree head that gives me the ability to turn it up to six degrees or down to three degrees. So naturally I am playing with it on the minus two setting and that gets me down to a loft of three degrees. Now, um, I'm not sure what that actually does to the face, whether it opens or not. All I can tell you is it sits perfectly square for me and I love the look of it. So to me, it doesn't really matter. I'm a big believer that if you set something down and it looks good to your eye, don't ask any questions, just roll with it. Now, um, this head weight is coming in right at 188 grams, okay? And you can kind of actually see we have a piece of tape here on the back, which is um, where they actually have a weight port. And because I wanted to get my head to that 188 mark, uh, we actually pulled the weight out and put some tape over it, which made it actually uh, conforming or legal to use in competition. So if I didn't have a weight in there and I didn't have any tape over that, that would actually um, mean that the head is illegal uh, for use in competition. So like I said, total head weight is 188 grams. Um, that's something that I kind of stumbled upon accidentally when I was testing heads. They actually sent me one um, that was a little bit lighter came in right at that 188 mark and I noticed immediately I was swinging it a couple miles an hour faster than my old heads which are at 195 grams okay um, so like I said it's kind of funny how you stumble on some of this stuff um, I think there's a perception out there that um, you know you, you can go and get fit and that's the end of it but at the end of the day um, that's why I'm always kind of testing and tinkering with new things to find out if there's a better combination out there that I haven't found yet. So uh, I was fortunate enough to come across that. Now, uh, the shaft, and this is the actual shaft. Uh, shout out to uh, Patterson uh, for hooking me up with this. This is the uh, LD30, which is a long drive shaft. Okay, and I actually have a uh, version of it, which is the LD50 as well. Um, I believe it comes out to actually uh, a stiff flex shaft. So um, the big misperception is that we're using uh, quadruple sh X shafts to where these things are boards, um, which is true for some guys, but some guys have also found it to be more beneficial to hit something a little bit weaker. Uh, Kyle Berkshire, Martin Borgmeier, uh, both guys who have uh, crossed the 230 mile an hour ball speed barrier, um, we're hitting the same shaft. So, um, and that's kind of, 
to be completely honest with you, what, what got me into testing it out was the fact I was seeing those guys having some great results from that. And so I decided to give it a try. Um, being that it's a little bit whippier, it is a little bit harder to control, but after you, you get enough reps in, um, you can start to kind of figure out how to, uh, you know, time it up and sequence it up. Um, but if I was going into competition, I would probably have a version of the LD30 and a version of something a little bit stiffer, uh, probably the LD70, uh, which is going to come in at like a double or triple X. And it's just basically situational. I would probably use that more uh, for two options. One, if I was into a straight headwind, uh, it might just give me a little bit more sense of control. Or if I was struggling or my swing fell off, um, like I said, it is a little bit harder to time up a weaker shaft at our speeds, especially when you get into competition and you got the adrenaline going. Um, shaft, you, you, what I've found since I started doing long drive is shafts that feel good in practice uh, might feel a little bit whippy in competition. So that's why it's nice to um, have some options up there and you start to kind of tailor yourself into um, what your practice clubs are and what your competition shafts are. All right guys, so the last part of this club and this makeup is the grip, okay? So what you'll see here is I actually have a 25 gram Golf Pride uh, Tour 25 on there and this is tapered, so it's not parallel like you guys are used to seeing me use, uh, you know, the, the, the plus four jumbos on my irons and my normal golf clubs. Um, so this is a little bit different, but the purpose of this was to get as light of a grip on there as possible to reduce the overall weight, okay? Now, um, when you put a lighter grip on like this, it's going to typically make the swing weight go up. So the ratio of the butt end of the club to the um, end of the club or the head is typically gonna feel heavier. Um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily heavier, but it, you know, having a higher swing weight does allow you to feel that club a little bit more. And I like that. I like being able to feel the head more, especially uh, with the whole thing being a little bit lighter. Now, um, you know, and I kind of alluded to it, you could kind of see the difference between this grip and a mid-size plus four, which I have on the left, okay? Um, quite simply, this is about, uh, I would say the difference of about 35 grams. Now, this is the grip I was using last year. Uh, and, and like I said, it was, it was essentially 35 grams heavier. So going back full, full circle on this, um, obviously I was using a head that was uh, around 200 grams last year, a grip that was uh, 35 grams heavier. Before you knew it, I had an excess of uh, 45 grams of extra weight in my club. Uh, so kind of stumbling upon this and getting to this conclusion just through trial and error was something that played a big role in um, me being able to increase my club head speed. So at the end of the day, I think this is a, a great combination that I have going here. Uh, I was, went down to Callaway yesterday and did some testing down there and pretty much everything that they came back with, um, you know, was, was that the setup I, I currently have is, is the best option for me. Um, I'm fortunate because I do have a TrackMan uh, to test this stuff, which I think is really, really important. For me, I can never ever uh, test in one day. I think it, for me, it, it takes multiple uh, days of testing to kind of find the right combination uh, because the reality is things change. You're feeling different on different days. Your swing's at different places. Um, and, and to that point, I think that's why uh, it's important to continually get fit and get checked out. Uh, find your local Callaway rep and, uh, you know, you know, at least once a year, I would make sure that you're hitting the best equipment for you. So that's a look into the current setup I'm using. Obviously, I've been having some uh, uh, decent success with it from a club head speed and ball speed perspective. Um, if you guys like this video and you want to see more videos like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It lets me know that you guys care and it helps keep this thing going.